What's up, everybody? Welcome to Free Minded TV. Today's part two of the worst year of my life. Probably the most embarrassing story I have for you guys. Um, where I left off on part one was Methadone Mile. Pretty much uh, the heart of uh, drug addiction in Boston. And it's no secret that uh, Mass Ave has a bad reputation. So let's back up a little bit. I got kicked out of a shelter, and now I'm on methadone for the first time in my life in an environment pretty much by myself that I'm not used to being in. In this video, we're going to be pretty much talking about how methadone was very dangerous for me and for other people out there that were doing the same thing I was. Why it was so dangerous is because what I was doing was taking what they call the cocktail. Methadone alone works for a lot of addicts. The problem is it's so easy to abuse, and once you start abusing it, it's very easy to become a fatal situation. And to make matters worse, around that same time, there was a new drug added to the so-called cocktail, which was Finnegan or Finnegan's, as they are known on the street as. And what it is is basically a scissor. So it's basically mixing scissor with synthetic heroin. What really opened my eyes to how messed up this drug was was I was walking down in downtown Boston when I could have sworn I seen a guy selling oranges in an orange cart. What makes this messed up is it was probably around February, March at the time, and you just don't see that in Boston. I looked back and there was nobody there. Another telltale sign that this was a horrible concoction was I was constantly walking into poles. At one time, when I finally got arrested, I had two black eyes, swollen nose. I, I gotta get my booking picture for you guys. One of the most scariest events to take place, though, was I ended up stumbling off a subway train, sitting on a bench, and the next thing I realized, I was falling face first right next to the third rail. And I heard a train coming. Luckily, it was coming from the other, other way, but I still had a struggle to get back up to the platform. It was one of the most scariest moments of my life. This story is somewhat funny, but also very sad. Back then, I honestly didn't care, but one day when I was leaving the methadone clinic, an older woman threw a brick at the back of my head and then took her metal cane and started whacking me in the back of the head with it. Luckily, security pulled her off. Someone that I was associating with at that time, I guess, stole this lady's medication, and she took it out on me. While it was going on, I had no clue why she was doing it. I found out later. I walked away fine from that incident for about a half hour, and then I was rushed to Mass General because I ended up overdosing. I took a handful of pills before I went into the clinic that morning, and I guess getting hit in the head put me out. I was in a coma for two days. But did I learn? Nope. I would eventually be sleeping on the streets and breaking into wherever I could to sleep, to stay warm. And I went out maybe two, three times by myself and miraculously woke up in an emergency room bed being narcan more times than I can remember. The grossest thing happened one night after I ended up overdosing, getting narcan and discharging myself against orders. I ended up having nowhere to go, freezing outside. So I ended up taking a sleeping bag and sleeping in one of these trash, wooden trash barrel bins and woke up to rats crawling all over the sleeping bag. Luckily, it was zipped up all the way, but I have never been so grossed out in my life. The last overdose was the worst. I took about 20 clodopins, and I ended up getting narcan close to seven times. Um, the doctor was going to give up, and I'm grateful that the nurse made the doctor do it one last time, and I came back. It really didn't even register to me what I was doing to my body at the time. I was so messed up and had nothing to live for. That's the biggest thing, is having something to live for. If you know a loved one 
match on the street. Tell them that. Make sure they know they love you. You don't have to do much for them. But let them know you think of them. It means more than you know. Thank you. Also, please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Stay free-minded.